Welcome to Watch Me Code. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install RabbitMQ on a Windows 8 machine. Now, RabbitMQ, if you're not familiar with it, is a robust messaging system for application development, basically. It allows you to use messages to send information back and forth between different processes that are running on different computers, basically giving you the ability to build distributed applications through messaging instead of through other protocols like HTTP or remote procedure calls that you may have done in the past. To get started with Windows, we're going to head over to the installation page, and we're going to start by hitting the Windows installation guide, not the quick downloads up here at the top. So in the installation guide, there's a couple of different things you need to download. First of all, you need to download RabbitMQ server itself, but then since RabbitMQ is written in Erlang, you need to install Erlang on your Windows machine as well. Now I've already downloaded both of these things, so I'm going to skip the download process and just get to the installation here. I'm going to start by installing Erlang. Follow through the prompts that you see on here and make sure you install everything that's included. Now, if this is the first time that you've installed Erlang, you may see a pop-up asking you to accept a license agreement for Microsoft C++ runtime. Go ahead and accept that agreement and install the C++ runtime as well, because that is needed for Erlang to be installed. Once you have Erlang installed, you can go ahead and close this window. Next up, you can install RabbitMQ. Once again, you're just going to follow through the prompts here and make sure you install all of this. And that's really it. That's basically getting RabbitMQ installed. Of course, that didn't actually do anything for you in terms of writing your applications. RabbitMQ is not yet running, and there are some things that we want to do to make it easier for ourselves. First thing I'm going to do is open up my Start menu here, and I'm going to start by typing Command, and it's going to pull up a RabbitMQ command prompt, which is what I want. Now, inside of this RabbitMQ command prompt, you'll see, you'll see various files show up here, such as RabbitMQ plugins, RabbitMQ server, and a few other things. And while it is possible to manage RabbitMQ entirely through a web browser, once you get a management plugin installed and configured, I really recommend getting familiar with these command line tools. The command line tools do make it easier to get things done quickly and allow you to automate some things as well. For now though, we're gonna go ahead and start RabbitMQ and then we're going to get the management plugin configured so that we can use the visualization in RabbitMQ's management plugin and be able to see what's going on inside of our server. To get rolling then, I'm going to run RabbitMQ server and the start command with that. Now after the initial installation, RabbitMQ should start up automatically. You can check that by running RabbitMQ server with the start option, and you might see an error message like this, which basically means that Rabbit is already running. Now in order to really manage this visually and be able to see the messages in the queues and everything else that's going on, we are going to want to configure the RabbitMQ management plugin. To do that, I'm going to use RabbitMQ-plugins and I'm going to say enable RabbitMQ underscore management. And as you can see, this is enabling various plugins inside of RabbitMQ. Once they are enabled, it restarts RabbitMQ. And after that completes, we can head back over to a browser and look at RabbitMQ on our local host. Once you have the management plugin enabled, you should be able to hit localhost 15672 and you'll see a page like this. By default, the username and password that you want to use is guest and guest you can log in and see that RabbitMQ is running. From here, you'll be able to look at all your RabbitMQ connections, the various channels, exchanges, queues, and other administrative options inside of the RabbitMQ system. But that's all I'm going to show you for now. Stay tuned for an upcoming episode of Watch Me Code, though, where I will show you how to use RabbitMQ directly from this management interface before we start diving into some code. Uh -huh.